So the first package is another one of these um, EEPROM adapters. And this one is just like the other um, EEPROM adapters from 2764, 2728, 27256 or 27512 to 2364, which is the standard uh, size of the C64 kernel and the 1541 kernel. This one is special in that it A has proper drilled holes. The last ones I had were really shitty to work on. Um, it comes with a socket, with a good quality socket, and with the pin headers, and with some um, SMD resistors, which can be used to um, accommodate for the um, EEPROM which is used. And you can also add a switch to do some kernel switching, which is pretty nice. This one cost six euros 70 cents, I guess. And it's of much higher quality. It even comes with a um, description on the back, which I guess I'm holding. No, it's right. It tells you which resistor to solder for which kind of EEPROM. And here are the pads for the, <clears throat> here are the pads for the switch. So this is really, really nice. Nicely made, comes with the instructions uh, seller is very helpful and these others I ordered in the last package, uh, uh, retro packages video, these were really crap. I had to drill every hole um, to just get the socket in and that was really a pain. So they work but they were not good. And this is a complete different story here. So if you're buying some, buy, buy these. Next up we have <coughs> the Hanmatech digital oscilloscope. And I'm still working as time of this filming on my C64 handheld. And it turns out I need an oscilloscope to properly diagnose what's going wrong. Already had one setback, um, which I found yeah, by chip switching. You will see all that in the video. And I had this abomination of an oscilloscope, which I don't even want to call an oscilloscope. It's some Chinese thing which you can build yourself as a kit. Um, and let's quickly switch it on. I had to solder this cable directly to the PCB because the port broke on day one, the power port. And yes, you can theoretically use this and as you can see, I have taped on some uh, wires and smaller clamps on these crocodile clamps because who the hell needs crocodile clamps on an oscilloscope like that? Problem is, it doesn't work correctly. So the values are all over the place and it's near impossible, or it is impossible, to get some proper readings. As you can see, it's even give, giving me values now. So if I um, touch these, you can see it's generating values. Yeah, so that didn't work out, so I had to order a proper oscilloscope, which seems to be this one here, because it has good reviews on Amazon, it cost me 260 euros, I guess, including tax. But since I have a business, I can reduce the tax or don't pay the tax. And so I'm set back about 190 euros or something. Um, you can also use this as a PC oscilloscope. So you can transfer data from this directly to software on the PC. And that is pretty neat. And here's a proper set of cables and adapters and clamps and all that stuff. <coughs> and a USB cable, and the main attraction, of course, the oscilloscope. I have never worked 
intensively with an oscilloscope, so I'm not sure what makes a good quality oscilloscope. I did some reading on that topic. And um, well, this is it. Looks professional to me, to my, um, how can I say that, uh, amateur eyes. Even as a handle, looks like a ghetto blaster now. Um, yeah. So I'm looking forward to working with this and to get the C64 handheld running because that is really bugging me that I can't fix this without a proper oscilloscope. So that is that. It's called the Henmatech Digital Oscilloscope and uh, it's the DOS 1102. Yeah, not much to see here. We'll try it out and see how it works in the next video, I guess. Next package is this one and it has almost the height of the item that should be inside. So I guess packaging will be debatable. Let's check it out inside. So first up we have an empty box. Nice. And then we have, well, at least it's wrapped in something. It's an Armstrit disc adapter. Man. And it's sticky. And it has two cables. What is this? Okay, so I guess someone attached a second cable to this. to add a five and a quarter inch disk drive. I have no idea. Interesting, Ooh, that's sticky. Got a bit of packaging material here. Oh, so look at this, it's actually nicely wrapped. And we have another DDI-1 disk drive. Okay condition, nothing broken. I assume that the Rubber belt is dead again. And that was all that was in the box, except for this one here. And it's packaged okay. So I have seen much worse, and you have too, if you have ever watched one of my retro packages episodes. And we have another one of the big key keyboards. That seems to be broken. And it's very, very dusty. Reset works. And it seems to be one of the earlier models because the ports are on the back side. And we even have some... What is this? Some printer um, connector stuck in the printer port. That's kind of nice. If you need one. Let me check if I get this out. And something came out. Okay, there's the rest of the printer port, I guess. So let's plug it in and check it out. So this machine in the drive was uh, sold as unknown condition. Hmm, let's check how unknown this condition really was. Let's test the drive first, switch it on. Yeah, pretty green light, which is good, but not quite sure if there should be a red light too. So monitor is plugged in. Oh, look at that, it works. And it even has a Vortex RAM expansion card. That's interesting. Not quite sure what it means. Could mean that it has 256K, but this looks more like a 512 kilobyte RAM expansion, which would be which would be a lot for a 64K machine. Oh, that's interesting. I have to read this up. What this is? That's uh, didn't expect that. Nice. Okay, so it doesn't recognize the drive. That may be because I plugged it in 
the wrong cable. Let's check this out. I should have probably switched it off first. No, nothing. So the controller seems to be dead, or at least the ports seem to be pretty uh, grimy so that they can't make a connection. I had this in, in another TPC. So I will give this a quick clean and then we check out again. Oh yeah, that is indeed pretty dirty. That could very well be the reason why we don't see anything on the screen if we type cat. Oh, the lower side is good. Okay, I plugged the controller back in, grabbed the disk for testing. So the drive is on, monitor's on, switch the machine on, and here we go, nice. Now let's check if the drive works. Uh, it's making a noise, but I assume and it actually found this drive, which is pretty good too. But I guess the belt is done. So we have to switch the belt again, but I will not do this in this video because you have seen this in the last videos, switching a belt on the 6128 and on the DI1. So um, I will just switch the belt and go from there. But I will definitely look up this um, memory expansion, which is quite interesting. Vortex RAM expansion card. I will check this out quick. So it turns out that this RAM expansion was indeed sold in different flavors and the largest one being 512K. So I guess we have to open the machine up and take a look inside because this is quite interesting. Um, this expanded RAM can be used in um, basic on the CPC and if you um, add a little program or start a little program which came on cassette tape, you can also use this in CPM, which would make this a quite interesting CPM machine. So let's uh, open this uh, CPC 464 up and um, check out the inside. So far, I'm really pleased with this purchase. There's a memory expansion inside here, which wasn't advertised. I did get the long key or the tall key version of the CPC, which is always good because it's, it has much more value than the short key version and it looks to be in good condition it was well packaged so no complaints this time which is uh, nice for a difference and I got this interesting controller board for the for the DDI1, which has a second cable, which I have never seen before. So we will, I guess, open the controller board up also and take a look inside. Maybe this is just plugged in. Could be, I have no idea. I have such a cable around, which came with the um, Amstrad mother load, but couldn't make anything of it. But maybe this is just getting plugged into the controller board with the other one. So let's open this up and so check this out wow that looks like something interesting and it's indeed a vortex sp512 which is the maximum you could get for this machine and this ram expansion won't fit in into any, any other Armstrong machine it would only fit into the cpc 464 so this makes this machine really outstanding and incredible and I guess the most memory packed Armstrad that I have and that you could possibly get. That is crazy. I'm still in awe. So this gets plugged I guess into where the, um, the AD CPU or Z80 CPU sits and you can see the Z80 Zilog is right up here on the board and that would be the memory I guess and here's a special ROM interesting now there are actually 
more connectors beneath this. You see this? There are three connectors. I have no idea what for. Plug this in again. Awesome. Yeah, I guess I will do an in-depth video about this RAM expansion um, somewhere in the near future because I didn't expect this and th that would, I guess, make an interesting video because it's, uh, as far as I know, a rarity. So, great. Really great. Let's put this back together and check out the controller board. Okay, so let's open up this controller board and check out what's inside. I don't recall that this came with this second cable. And all my other controller boards have just one cable. So let's open this. And, okay, just get it out. Interesting construction. So this, oh, this is tearing off already. So this clip up here is broken, it seems. Yeah, it is. If I pull this out, I guess that won't come back together again. And it just sits just on top of the other connector. So you can see here. These are just stacked together. Interesting construction. Never opened one of these. Probably should have. So I guess I will just leave it to this. Um, I will have to check what this cable here means. And it's also, uh, I'm not sure if this should be in here. I have no idea. I guess this is used for um, using a five and a quarter inch disk drive and CPM because someone who has 512K of RAM is not just using this machine for basic. That is surely an expansion cable for using this machine with a, um, the CPM. It fits perfectly in here, so that is Really interesting. Just not sure if it still works, but we will see if we change the belt on the drive. A CPC 464 with 512 kilobytes of RAM. Very unusual, very, very unusual. Um, and a disk drive controller with two cables. Who would have thought? Um, yeah, nice purchase for, I guess, 120 euros with the drive and all this stuff. So I'm very happy with this. So the final package is something I'm waiting for for a very, very long time. Not because uh, it took so long to ship, but because it's hard to get for a good price. And it is a little less retro than usual. And no, it's not a DDI1 disk drive this time. Thank God, I have enough of these already. It is a docking station or a charging station for an IBO dock. I have that dock, an IBO ERS210, for about one and a half years now. And the hard part is to find the matching charging knob for the power supply. So this came without a power supply and I wasn't aware that it's so hard to find that. I have a power supply, replacement, uh, replacement power supply which should be plugged in here. Yeah, but haven't tried this dock since. And um, I will do an episode about this. So that should fit in here somehow. Let me quickly test that. Yeah, that sits right on its charging station. And the cool thing is that it actually walks to the charging station by itself and docks to it and walks around and plays and does stuff, whatever it does, I don't know, I have to find out. It has a memory stick inside, it has a personality, it has some AI and I wanted one of these robo docks um, since I was a kid or at least a young adult and they were really, really expensive, I guess $5,000 back in the day and I got this dock for, I guess, two, 220 um, 
and the charging station now for, for 100. So that is quite a reasonable price. And uh, I'm really looking forward to dig into this topic. It's not really retro, but I still like it. So it's like this charging station actually works. So that is great news and I will keep you posted on uh, how Ibo works and what he does. Nice. This so. marks the end of this video. Uh, thanks for watching and until next time. Bye bye. Thank you for watching Retro is the New Black. If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. If you like the video, please share. Every like, share, and comment helps a lot. Until next time, bye bye.